Have you ever wondered how pilots manage to land an aircraft smoothly? It's a question that may have crossed your mind as you felt the gentle thud of wheels touching the tarmac. One of the key components to this process is a maneuver known as the landing flare. This critical phase in the landing process involves the pilot increasing the angle of the aircraft's nose just before touchdown, reducing the descent rate and ensuring a smooth landing. It's a delicate dance of speed, angle, and timing, playing a significant role in protecting the aircraft and its occupants. And yet it often goes unnoticed by those on board, lasting merely a moment in the grand scheme of a flight's journey. So, how does this seemingly simple maneuver play such a crucial role in landing an aircraft? Let's delve deeper into the process. Understanding the landing flare requires breaking it down into manageable steps. Let's dive right into it. The landing flare is much like a well-choreographed dance, with each step executed with precision and timing. The first step begins as the aircraft approaches the runway. As the ground becomes nearer, the pilot prepares for landing. This preparation involves reducing the speed of the aircraft and extending the landing gear and flaps. Think of it as a bird, extending its legs and slowing its descent as it approaches a perch. The second step of the landing flare is initiated just before touchdown. The pilot gently pulls back on the control column to raise the nose of the aircraft. This action is akin to a bird, tilting its head back just before landing. It's a critical maneuver that increases the angle of attack the angle between the aircraft's wing and the oncoming air. Now, you might be wondering, why increase the angle of attack? Well, increasing the angle of attack has a direct effect on lift. It increases lift and, in turn, reduces the descent rate. This is the third step of the landing flare, a delicate balance between lift and descent that ensures the aircraft doesn't hit the ground too hard. Finally comes the touchdown. The main landing gear touches down first followed by the nose gear. It's a graceful sequence, much like a bird gently landing on a perch with its body following the touch of its feet. Each of these steps is crucial in ensuring a smooth landing, but what happens when something goes wrong? Like any other aviation maneuver, the landing flare comes with its own set of risks. Indeed, the flare's subtlety belies its complexity, making it a critical juncture in the landing sequence. One of the key risks associated with improper flaring is hard landings. In such instances, the aircraft hits the ground with more force than intended, causing discomfort for passengers and potentially damaging the aircraft's structure or landing gear. Another potential consequence of improper flaring is a runway overrun. This occurs when the aircraft is unable to stop on the runway, resulting in it rolling off the end. A runway overrun can lead to serious accidents, especially if the runway ends abruptly or is surrounded by hazardous terrain. Tail strikes present another risk. These occur when the aircraft's tail contacts the ground during landing. A tail strike can cause significant structural damage to the aircraft and, in extreme cases, can even lead to loss of control. To illustrate these risks, consider the incident involving Flair Airlines Flight FLE 501. The aircraft overran the runway at Kitchener-Waterloo Airport in Ontario. While the exact cause of this overrun was not specified, such incidents underscore the need for precise control during landing, including the flare maneuver. Understanding these risks is not about instilling fear, but rather about emphasizing the importance of precision and control in aviation. Every landing is a delicate ballet of speed, angle, and timing, with the flare serving as the grand finale. It requires skill, judgment, and extensive training to execute correctly. Remember, improper flaring doesn't just pose a risk to the aircraft and its passengers. It also puts stress on airport infrastructure and can disrupt operations, leading to delays and additional costs. The risks associated with improper flaring underscore the importance of mastering this technique, but how do pilots ensure they execute the flare correctly? Well, that's a story for the next scene. To execute the flare maneuver effectively, pilots rely on a combination of rigorous training and advanced technology. Imagine for a moment you're in the cockpit of an aircraft, the runway is fast approaching, and it's time to land. As a pilot, you must possess the skills, judgment, and knowledge to perform the flare maneuver perfectly. But how do you acquire these skills? The answer lies in intensive training and the use of cutting-edge technology. Training is a core component of mastering the flare maneuver. 
pilots undergo comprehensive training, both theoretical and practical, to understand the intricacies of the landing flare. They learn about the physics of flight, the mechanics of aircraft, and the variables that can affect a landing. But perhaps the most critical part of their training involves flight simulators. Flight simulators are sophisticated devices that replicate the experience of flying an aircraft in a safe and controlled environment. They allow pilots to practice landing in a variety of conditions, from clear skies to stormy weather, and from calm winds to turbulent gusts. By training in these replicated scenarios, pilots gain the experience and confidence they need to handle the real thing. But training alone isn't enough. Technology plays a significant role in aiding pilots during the flare maneuver. Modern aircraft are equipped with a range of technological tools designed to assist pilots. One of these is the radio altimeter, a device that uses radio waves to determine the aircraft's altitude above the ground. This information is crucial during the flare maneuver, as it helps the pilot judge when to initiate the flare. Another essential piece of technology is the Visual Approach Slope Indicator System, often referred to as VASI. This system provides pilots with visual cues to help them maintain the correct approach slope during landing. By following the VASI's guidance, pilots can ensure they are at the right altitude and angle for a successful flare. These technological tools, combined with rigorous training, equip pilots with the skills and knowledge they need to execute the flare maneuver successfully. They enable pilots to make informed decisions, react to changing conditions, and ultimately land their aircraft smoothly and safely. With the right training and technology, pilots can execute the landing flare effectively, ensuring a smooth landing every time. So to recap, the landing flare is a crucial maneuver in the landing process of an aircraft. It's a delicate ballet of reducing speed, extending gear and flaps, and raising the nose just before touchdown to increase lift and decrease descent rate. Picture it like a bird slowing its wings and extending its legs before alighting on a perch. However, this maneuver isn't without risks. Improper flare execution can lead to hard landings, runway overruns, or even tail strikes, posing a serious threat to aircraft and passenger safety. One need only recall incidents like the Flare Airlines Flight FLE 501 to understand the gravity of these risks. To mitigate these dangers, pilots undergo rigorous training, often using flight simulators to replicate various landing scenarios. Modern aircraft also come equipped with technological aids like radio altimeters and visual approach slope indicator systems to help pilots judge the right timing for the flare. Remember, the landing flare is not just about achieving a smooth landing, it's about ensuring the safety of all those aboard the aircraft. So, the next time you land smoothly, you know who and what to thank.